Hey everybody and welcome back to The Rant. This is going to be our Halloween special. We're going to talk nothing but video games that are spooky and scary and just gave us the creeps. You know, the kind of stuff you like to play at midnight with the lights off and a headset on so that you can't hear a damn thing except the crazy creature that is clicking away around the corner and you start getting anxious and freaked out. Josh, help me out here. Boo. Nah, I'm just kidding. But seriously, folks, it's our Halloween special, and we've got a few good mentions for you. You know what, Josh? I, I feel like I feel like you should lead us off, man. Well, I guess uh, I'll start off with one of the first games that actually made me kind of nervous while I was playing it. And it's not even actually... It, it's part of a game. It was the downloadable content for Borderlands. It was the Dr. Zed's... What was it called? Like Doctor Zed's uh, Zombie World or something like that. Yeah, it was. It, yeah, it was like Doctor Zed's Zombie Apocalypse or something. Yeah, it was. It was a weird kind of name that I, I, I just remember it being Doctor Zed. It's it's Ned with like a mustache to look evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Classic Borderlands. <clears throat> oh, but I just through every corner, through every crevice, there was zombies everywhere, and ah. Oh. It was, uh, the final boss in that one was the one that really, like, like, the, the, the werewolf guy, yeah. That was the one, like, I just wanted to get through it because I was like, this is gonna give me nightmares, I gotta get through this. <laughs> <laughs> the zombie. Actually, wait, I thought the, I thought the werewolf was like a, uh, one of those constantly respawning characters kind of almost like a mid boss if you will like I, I remember having to kill the werewolf like a few dozen times hmm. wasn't wasn't uh, the final boss like that giant mutated version of, of dr uh zed or ned wh whichever one is the fuck oh i think guy. it was i haven't played it in so long it's i just i remember like it was it, you, you you went to i think it was the slaughterhouse or something like that, or maybe it was the the lumber mill house. I forget, but I remember you go there and there's like a trap door and you fell through and then you're just in like this blood flesh pit, and there's the giant mutated form of Doctor Ned Zed whatever. And yeah, I remember it, killing him got you a weird SMG that looked like it shot white streamers instead of bullets. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, it's been so long. I, I remember. I faintly remember what you're talking about now that I think about it. <sighs> well, you know what? It's that time of year. We'll have to go play the zombie DLC. Yeah, later definitely. On. Refresh <laughs> the memory and the scary tingles on your spine kind of thing. Right, yeah. <laughs> so that so what a, just the amount of zombies popping up around every corner kind of gave you anxiety? Well, I think it was more the whole atmosphere of, of the DLC. They made it very spooky with mm -hmm. all the different types of monsters and stuff that came around. Yeah, Plus all the, all, the, all the side missions were, like, <laughs> scarily <laughs> hard. <laughs> that was a really long DLC pack. Like, I, I remember... I remember killing about a week or so, running all the missions in there. Like, you know, playing for a few hours every night. I, that was a long one. And I... I do agree with you 100%. The atmosphere was awesome. I, I do love I do love that walking on a scene and you can tell something bad happened, but nobody's left to talk about it. Yeah. I like that. And then when they put the when they put like a spooky overlay on it, like, you know, the giant moon and there's bats everywhere and the, you know, everything is in a creepy lighting. I, it makes it so much more fun. I love this time of year, man. This is my favorite <laughs> time of the year. All right, you know, the funny thing is my my top choice pick for spooky games is for the same reason. The atmosphere in it was just really spooky and creepy and kind of kind of just, you know, made you feel a little twitchy. Now, granted, it didn't give me a, a real big feeling like that, but I'm talking about the Fatal Frame series, specifically the first one. The first one was just, it's one of those games where you can play it a hundred times through Mm -hmm. And there will be some new creepy little thing that you'll catch each time. 
Like, it was one of those games that would have randomly generated spooky sound effects or spooky visuals. Like, I remember there's uh, there's one room off to the off to the side of the main path that is it's like a safe room if you will like there's a there's a save point there and all that stuff but i remember if you go in there enough times at some point you will you will kind of hear what sounds like the the death rattle of somebody underneath all this rubble that's in the corner of the room cuz like part of the room is collapsed a bit it's 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 like completely random and the funny thing is the first time I played that game, I, I did a run through with a buddy of mine because he he was he played the games for, you know many years and he was like, dude, you gotta play this. I'll even run with you. And we got to that room and he's like, aren't these sound effects scary? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't hear anything. And it, and it turns out that like the speakers on my TV back then were bad. And when I got a new TV and played through, I'm like, holy shit, I miss so much. <laughs> And there's just like spooky noises and weird, just weird cues that make you feel like you're going to get ambushed or, or that something really awful is around the corner that you're totally unprepared for it. The first game really gave me that. The second one actually kind of just really depressed me. <laughs> Anybody that's played the Fatal Frame games probably knows exactly where I'm coming from on this. The third one was a bit of a mix between both of them. It was scary and a little depressing, but they're they're very atmospheric games, and for me, they're like on the top of the list for something spooky for this time of the year. What about you, Joss? What's your second choice? Uh, Second choice is a game that I just started playing again today, actually. Uh, That's Bloodborne. And I know you don't think it's too scary, but to me... The, the feeling of hopelessness that this game gives me is, like, on top of all the crazy <laughs> weird shit that they throw into it. it, it it's just... Whew. It is a very <laughs> nerve-wracking game to play, especially when you're going up against giant beasts. Yeah, yeah, I will I will second that. I will second that. My first time through with it, they're... There, there were a lot of those moments where I just kind of felt like, ah, shit, I'm gonna die. <laughs> and you know the funny thing is uh, you've you've been as far as the bloodborne beast or the blood starved beast there are there's like five or six others that are way more like unnerving to take on yeah i thought so <laughs> <laughs> like oh you know i i'm not even gonna mention it because i don't want to ruin it for you but Thankfully, by the time we you get there, your character will be much stronger. I, I think you won't feel quite as much like you're gonna die, but you know, I will give you a I'll, I'll give you my sword arm, if you will, whenever you want. We will conquer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, that's that's it's definitely it's definitely got it's definitely got some kind of like oh shit atmosphere on occasion. Like I sort of felt that way when I first got to Old Yarnum. Is is that one of the ones that kind of tweaked you a little bit? Yeah, that was the one that kind of made me stop playing because you <laughs> enter in there and he's like, "Didn't you read the sign?" And I was like, "Oh God." <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely that's definitely one of the the more spooky bits, especially when you walk in there and you see all of the like. Um, smokes and smoke streams coming off of like well not to ruin it for anybody but if you haven't at least gotten to old yarnum yet it, you're you're gonna need some help but it's like previously burned corpses in large stacks <laughs> everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah and it's it's funny how all the critters in that first section it's like they're programmed to always pounce out of the smoke when they attack you yeah. Like, so you can't even see them. They just, ah, swing away, hope it dies. Uh, good times. Speaking of the, the oh shit feeling, though, that's that's where my number two pick came in. And I, I hope there, I hope enough people are going to know what I'm talking about, because this one's an indie title. It's called Outlast. It... This is the first and probably only game that actually really gave me anxiety about pushing forward in it. Like I, 
like five minutes in, I, I could feel my heart kind of pounding a little bit because I'm like, oh shit, I have no means to defend myself. I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> All you got is that camcorder. Exactly, exactly. And, like, even on normal, when you put it on the, the night vision so you can see in the pitch blackness, you look at the battery gauge and you're like, holy shit, it's down 10% already. And you, you, look at the, you look at the fact that you've got, like, two batteries with you at the start. You find one before the game actually gets rolling, and it's like, three batteries, that's it? That's what i got to try and work with? I mean... It's one of the few times I have actually just kind of felt jittery and then uh, adrenaline fueled was from that game because I kept feeling like I just kept feeling like I have no way of keeping myself alive. Like mm-hmm. my instinct from all the other video games I've played over the years is all right, I I may be weaker than what's going to attack me, but I know what it's going to do. If I do this, like maybe I can like chip away at his health until he's dead, and I I don't have that in Outlast. Are, are you familiar with Outlast? Have you played it, Josh? I, I've I've done a whole YouTube series on both Outlast and the Whistleblower, Whistleblower DLC. For oh, me. very nice, very nice. Then you definitely know where I'm coming from on this. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> even if the game doesn't give you anxiety, I think the content in there will make you shudder. Because, like, I don't know about you, and spoiler alert here. I I felt a little bit nauseous during the whistleblower where the uh, I think Josh knows where I'm going with this where the one the, dude the was ba- the pregnant the baby one yeah yeah the creepy guy that is trying to make a bride <laughs> yeah and he go, tries to cut yeah that's line. yeah that's that scene man who that was I was playing that game during the day not because I was like too scared or anything I just had free time but. Even during the day with sunlight and all this shit and no scary atmosphere, that that game just made me feel like, oh my god, I'm going to (laughs) die. That that one scene, if if you haven't seen it, look it up on YouTube. I guarantee it's on there. Hopefully censored. It's on my channel. (laughs) There you go. Go to Jarsh's opinion and check it out. Check it out and be afraid. (laughs) Oh, yes. The the, the guys that always... (laughs) spooked me the most in outlast uh well the the big the big burly guy who's in it until the end that guy always, oh yeah yeah the hunter character yeah the worst part was when you're in the, the sewerish area and you're in the complete pitch black and you can't even see with night vision and you're just walking around and you're listening to his feet oh the water, the water segment oh, yeah god and yeah that was the part that got me the most nervous in the whole game um the other part that got me close to the panic that was setting in there's this one part where it's it's with the big guy again and you go into a room and he's breaking down the door and the only way out is a vent that pops open at the last second (laughs) i know exactly what you're talking that one that one got me pretty nervous too yep yep by that point in the game i i wasn't i wasn't quite as jittery because i at least i had a little bit of confidence in the fact that i could outrun everything but the water segment, oh my god, that, I was stuck there for like a, a three or four hours because I couldn't find the stairs, mm-hmm. like, and I had used up all my batteries, and at the time, I didn't, I didn't know that they had the controls set up so that you could hold down a button and look behind you while you were running. Oh, yeah. So, like, I always, I always tried to keep my eye on the guy and run backwards, and, like, you can't move anywhere near fast enough. So there was just, like, a countdown. It was like, five, four, three. Oh, there goes my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that one part, that really freaked me out. Like, I was, as soon as the game started and there's that scene at the very beginning where you're trying to squeeze through that clutter in the upper hallway and you hear the big guy, like, out of nowhere, just little pig, and you're he grabs you and throws you through the window... Mm-hmm. I immediately was like, oh, fuck, he's going to be the one chasing me the whole game, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's not cool, man. I saw the giant bastard go into that doorway two minutes ago. I was really hoping I'd never see him again. The doctor was also one one heck of a part to do as well. He had to memorize the pathway oh back my God, to the I elevator. Got, I got so stuck there. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't get him to leave me alone long enough to open that one door. 
Right. Like, you know, the, the first door that you had to push the heavy item away from it so you could get through? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Plus, the game instilled me with so much panic that I, I never thought to try closing the doors again once I got through them. Oh, Which, oddly yeah. enough, like, slows everybody <laughs> down for, like, five seconds. You're like, oh, God, he closed it. I yep. have to turn the knob. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> that, I, uh, that game the one thing that ruined that feeling. game for me was the ending. I, I The whole game was great up until the last, like, five minutes of it. I thought... Was ah, it the fact that it was high science instead of, like, some sort of demon mystery thing? That and the fact that the army comes in and just wastes you at the end. Yeah, that part was a bit depressing. Although, you know, if you, if you, you finished the whistleblower content, right? Yeah, yeah. You know that he survived then. <laughs> now I do. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't oh, he, catch he, that part? Is it at the end? Yeah, at the very, at the very, like the way the, the way the DLC syncs up with the game is, um, the DLC starts before the, the main game does, okay? Yeah. And then when the guy from the DLC is knocked unconscious, in that time uh, period where he's unconscious and they're hooking him up to machines and shit, that's when the main character from the main game shows up and well, gets in. I know in. that much, yeah. So... When you the overlap is basically by the time the guy from the whistleblower escapes, the the guy from the main game has already become the host for the nano machines, and oh, being man. shot didn't mean shit to him. He tore through everybody in the facility, which is what that ending shot is, where you get into the spoilers, everybody spoilers, where you, <laughs> you get into the jeep and drive away, and you see. You know, that nightmarish nanomachine cloud behind you, and the dude is standing in the center of it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now and now it makes sense to me. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting. It's one of the few times where the DLC felt well planned out, which, you know, is, is really awesome in my opinion, especially considering this is like an independently developed game. It, it, my understanding is the guys that work for... Um, Red Barrel? Thank you, Red Barrel. They're they're all like veterans from other game companies, you know. They just they're like we wanted to make something that's just ours, so they kind of banded together and made their own game. And I, I was like, wow, this is this is really really good for an independent thing. So that's uh, that's my number two, just based on pure anxiety. <laughs> What's yours, Josh? Uh, I think uh, my number two is. Uh... Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I know it's kind of like an arcade arcade game. It's just all jump scares, but I mean, if you really boost the volume on your computer and you just hone in, you can hear the animatronics talking to you, whispering to you, moving around, shuffling, moving around. The the whole power thing also is like you're anxious to not use as much power and all of that. And like I said, I know it's I know it's a it's a stupid little you know, flash game pretty much, but it's still, it's still one of those scary games. And it's gone a little bit overboard now with two through four. And there's a movie, I guess, coming out for it. But, uh, it always got back to that old, old fear I have of the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. people, <laughs> And that was probably the worst part for me because it, it, it has the Chuck E. Cheese vibe. And I always hated those stupid robots on stage dancing and singing because they don't, they don't look like lifelike, but they sound lifelike. And, uh, it's 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 just one of those childhood fears that kind of resurfaced when that game came out. You know, I I have to agree with you. I can remember being in Chuck E. Cheese at like four, maybe five years old. I remember being intrigued by the animatronics, but at the same time, not wanting to get too close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like, oh, look at this giant mouse playing guitar, and then. The, Take a step forward and be like, no, 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 no. take a step back. <laughs> I, you know, I have never played the 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 game that you're talking about, but I have I have seen it listed on like a dozen other people's like top ten list of just kind of fucked up, scary little games. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're right though. I think it has gained a bit of a cult following because I have I have uh, seen a whole lot of references to sequels and other stuff like that. Yeah, two through four, don't even waste your money on. But number one, 
number one's number one's the game that they go for because the the rest of them they they went too in depth and then they dumbed it down for the third one then they then they made it, 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 it number one just go for number one. <laughs> <laughs> So that's an endorsement for uh, what is it? Five Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Not really Nights an at endorsement, Freddy's. but more like, hey, if you want to play one of them, play the first one. <laughs> Recommendation then. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. And fucking creepy. Now that I really think about it. <laughs> Damn you! Why'd you have to uncover a childhood fear that was clearly lying buried and dormant? <laughs> <laughs> What? Damn it! <laughs> One new phobia for the road. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, my my next pick. Um, you know, it, it the this isn't really a scary game or anything to me, but the atmosphere was really awesome, and it was. It was one of those games that I was I was very obsessed with when I first got it, and that's the <laughs> original Devil May Cry on the PS2. I think everyone will agree with me. It's not really terrifying or anything. It's not it's not scary in any way, but the atmosphere of that very first one was really well thought out. Like, you know, you the game starts and it's already a little bit dark and seedy looking and you know, you 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 have that opening cutscene where uh, uh uh um Crap, I'm blanking on the name of the other main character. That's awesome. Uh, Trish? Was it Trish? I haven't played it, so... Crap. <laughs> You've never played the original Devil May Cry? No. Crap. It's the, it's the blonde chick who looks like Dante's mother. I totally am blanking on the name now. This is awesome. I'm an avid Devil May Cry fan. I can't fucking remember main character name. Somebody's going to read me in the comments for this one, I'm betting. <laughs> um, <laughs> the opening scene, they, they're kind of scuffling kind of deal and then it cuts to them at the the main island that where the entire game plays out which um i want to say it's called malay island i think it was it's made up it doesn't actually exist but it's like mm -hmm. right from the get-go you feel this kind of old world abandoned spookiness to it it's not real scary or anything but it it just it sets the tone like, you start out on that path, and Dante cuts uh, cuts between the two doors to unlock them, and you... Uh, yeah, it was Trish. It's got to be Trish. That's got to be the name of the damn blonde. God, this is going to bug me the rest of the fucking night. <laughs> right? She disappears, and you're left on your own, and you're, you're, you know, you're running up this crumbling path up to the... Uh, side entrance to the castle that's the main area for the game and it's just everything around you looks like this old crumbling eastern european kind of vibe you know almost like you're climbing up the mountainside to uh, vlad the impaler's castle you know it's it's just very atmospheric and it spikes it, up the butthole yeah <laughs> fortunately that's not in there but it you know honestly it could have been it wouldn't have seemed out of place Lots of the Imperial. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know your history. Very good, sir. Thank you. Um, what was that show called? Uh, Deadliest Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a. Why the hell was that on the Deadliest Warrior show? They did Vlad the Impaler versus Shinsu. God, that that show had weird shit on it. I I watched like two episodes of that, and then I I was I was done with it. I'm like, this this is boring. I'm moving on. But clearly, they did something sort of of interest. But and yeah, you know, they... it, 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 I'm getting off topic again, as I tend to do. <laughs> Devil May Cry, the atmosphere. It was just it was just just creepy and spooky enough that it it felt really fun and intriguing, and it kept you interested, especially so where. It, like the lighting scheme and all that changes for the castle the further into the game you go like when you start it's like it's like dusk you know there's there's sunlight but not a whole lot of it so you get a little bit of spooky shadows here and there right and as you get a little further in it gets dark so there's less light except for some eerie torch lit kind of deal so even more atmosphere and then you get a little further in when things start kicking it up and all of the paranormal and and demon stuff starts really amping up and then there's just like spooky glowing everywhere and and 
uh, you know, kind of like demon portals into the, the, the underworld and all this shit. And it just, it just, the game just had a really cool, spooky vibe throughout the whole way that never pulled me out of the story. Hmm. Like it, 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 it empowered it, it added to it. I, I hate it when something overpowers the rest of the game and then you feel pulled out of the story. I hate that. The first Devil May Cry did it perfect. I, I I love that series, the Devil May Cry series, and to be honest, the first one is my favorite. Like, even though the combat is not as involved and awesome as the later ones, none of them stack up to the atmosphere and just the cool story the first one did. Mm-hmm. That is that is all in spite of the bad voiceover acting. Because that was back in the day where it was, I swear to God, it was like, dude, you busy Friday? We need you to record some dialogue for the new game we're working on. You know, like they didn't bother to get anybody that knew what the fuck they were doing. Mm-hmm. It's like, Fred's got the day off, he'll totally record. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, one's, that one's my third major pick. How about you? Oh, you went backwards. That was your number two. No, no, no. Number two was Outlast. So this would be number one then. I yeah, I was listing it sort of. I was referencing them backwards. I am. I fuck whatever. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> so this is number one. Uh, okay, spookiest game for me. Although I didn't entirely enjoy the game completely. Uh, Alien Isolation was. The most nerve-wracking game I've ever played, besides from Outlast. Uh, it definitely had the whole vibe of the first movie, and it was, uh, other than the fact that there was some dumb characters in there, uh, everything from the first chapter all the way to the ending, it's just, it's all very good, very well done. Uh, the, all you pretty much have in the game is a motion tracker, and you know how spooky things can get when all you have is a motion tracker and there's aliens everywhere. So, <laughs> you know, uh, just getting through the game was quite quite fun. Um, although it wasn't exactly you know a, a ten out of ten, it was it was it wasn't my favorite game, and it actually got on the worst games of the list that I did 2014. <laughs> but it was still spooky enough that it, it made me, um, you know, <laughs> nervous enough to put it on this list and. The only reason I really didn't enjoy the game, there's really no direction in it, even though there's only one pathway you can pretty much follow. The other thing else, dead ends. Um, and also a lot of the, the uh, voice actors for the side characters was just, like, just dumb. Kind of like, you know, how Japanese people do the English version of this. It, it didn't sound right. But other than that, I mean, the spooky game, I loved running away from the aliens and, and fighting them off. And really, uh, if you're looking for... Uh, uh, um, the next Aliens movie, you might as well just play the game because there's going to be no more Alien movies. It's going to be just, just the, the Alien. The <laughs> alien Isolation is 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 the is the game to play to get spooked out for me at least. You know, I, I never played that one. Like I, I kept intending to pick it up, but I just never got around to it. So I have one question that is very very important to me because I've been a big fan of the Alien movies since I was like seven. Mm-hmm. The motion tracker, it does it look and work just like the one from the second movie? <laughs> Everything looks and and feels and sounds like the first movie. Okay, the first one the first one's acceptable. I liked the I liked the second one better. I, I think you know what I'm talking about where it it it, it had like a half circle deal. Uh, yeah, and like as you as you turn, you'd see the display turn to orient to where you were facing. Like if you're facing north, and you start turning uh, to your left, you know it would start showing what's coming from the west and all that. I just I don't know why I always liked that one, and I think it was that scene where they were crawling through like the uh, the sub ceiling, mm-hmm. and they just kept showing the motion tracker with all the little <laughs> things on there. So I get I get what you mean that I will definitely have to go pick that up now if if it's got that kind of vibe to it that ah oh, crap something's coming I know it's coming I can see it on the thing but where the hell is it? The first person face huggers. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> that that definitely that definitely would be a creepy moment. Oh god. Like uh, did you ever play Aliens vs. Predator the game? Yes, yes I did play that. That the was whole, that was fun. The one the the face huggers are the things that I am the most afraid of and that game you had you 
there was an achievement to do put a face hugger on every single human in the game, and that just I was I was oh. like I ain't doing that. <laughs> like it's it's bad enough that I did it to one person. I I'm not doing this. Yeah, that's I get what you mean. That's that's one of those that's one of those trophy achievements that like you just you just feel uncomfortable doing. It's. See, that takes me back to, like, uh, the first Bioshock game where there was that trophy uh, achievement to either save all the little sisters or to right, yeah. harvest all the little sisters. <laughs> and, like, I, I did it, but, like, I felt, felt fucking horrible for a little bit after I harvested all the little sisters in the game. I'm like, man, I'm an asshole. <laughs> this it's, it's is the same thing. It's like going Renegade in Mass Effect, you know? It, yeah, it yeah, I did it, but you things. never, I never enjoyed it. It's weird. It's weird. They really do, they really do ingrain it in you that you should be like the the altruistic hero. But yeah, it's, it is weird. Like a, a former buddy of mine, though, it actually kind of speaks volumes to who he was as a person and why he's not a friend of mine now. But he enjoyed being the Renegade more than anything. Mm. In the first Mass Effect, he, in fact, all I remember him saying is, "Damn it! I wish there was an option to just like shoot this bitch in the head." I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, dude! What is wrong with you? I think he was talking about the uh, the reporter chick oh, from the you, game. Yeah. You know that one? And granted, yeah. I I I kind of always choose punch the her. option to punch her in this in the <laughs> second game, but yeah, but shoot her? I don't think she deserves to be shot. Shit character doesn't have to die. She doesn't right. try to like kill you. Then then it's shoot her, but. All right, yeah, so I fucked this up and went from the top to bottom instead of bottom to top because I'm an idiot and I wasn't paying attention. You know, so, I, even, I even reminded you before we started. I'm like, yes, you, start you did. Yes, you, you did. I don't know why I didn't I didn't reorder my list. Like, I somehow it actually is, like, top to bottom. Like, this is my favorite. I don't know why I didn't flip it and read it the other way. I apologize. Uh, but either way, I did remember to leave my honorable mentions at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've only done three so far, so you still got one more, right? True, true. There is one more, but it sort of seems stupid to do it now. <laughs> oh, might as well. Go, go. Your, yours are backwards, mine are forwards. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm, the, uh, I'm the fuck up on this one. Enjoy. All right, well, the least on my list, which should have been the first, was The Evil Within. Mostly just because the game didn't give me any creepy vibes, it didn't scare me, it didn't give me any anxiety, but the game is just one giant nightmare image after another kind of thing. Like, there is there is no moment in the entire game where it feels kind of normal. Like, every scene has some sort of weird, twisted view to it. Like, even at the very beginning... When none of the nightmare shit has happened yet, and you're just on your way to the crime scene, they made sure that the lighting and, and the colors and all that were very draining, so mm -hmm. that it, you know, it didn't. Nothing looked natural. Everything kind of looked like it was fading uh, towards death or something. I guess if you will, it just. That's why. That's why I'm putting it in the list at all because it's just everything was just a nightmare image. You know, like, it, honestly, I feel like I should have been a little scared for some of those things. Because, like, anybody that's played through the game, I guarantee they they weren't happy about the first time they had to face the, um, I don't know what the hell his name is, like, the executioner or whatever. The dude that has a safe for a head. Yeah, okay, I know. Like, no, I, I guarantee nobody was like, oh, yeah, I get to kick the shit out of this guy. Because, like, that was not my impulse. <laughs> Even by the time I got to the first dude, I, I had an okay supply of ammo with me. You know, I was like, all right, I feel like I can, I feel like I don't have to, you know, totally scrimp on, on the ammunition. But still, I wasn't like, oh, let's do this, motherfucker. I was like, ah, oh, god damn it. Back away. <laughs> <laughs> Aim for the face. Oh, his face is metal. That doesn't help. So yeah, that that was that was my my low end pick for the list. Still though, I didn't fuck up on honorable mentions, but I feel <laughs> like Josh should lead off since I screwed up the rest of it. <sighs> honorable mentions. Well, 
Uh, first honorable mention for me, I have two of them. I, I just thought of another one. But the first one yes. is Until Dawn. Although the game is 99% jump scares, I still think they gave it a great like teen movie atmosphere. and It's a nice game to just kind of run through, do what you want with it. It's one of those choose-your-adventure type things, but things actually matter. You can actually kill people way you know before the game ends, so it, it changes the ending a little bit. Um, so it's not like a telltale game. It's more like a, an actual choose-your-adventure type game. And you get nice character development, you get nice scenes, nice action scenes, um, especially when things are chasing you or things jump out at you. Um, but it is, like I said, 99% jump scares, so it's like, it gets boring after a while. But it's still a nice game with nice atmosphere, and they did a nice job with it. And then, my other honorable mention is uh, Resident Evil 4, because oh. uh, that, that was a nice, spooky game for me to play when I was a kid on the GameCube, and I, had, I hadn't I had played anything above T-rating <laughs> since, you know, because I was only, like, 12 years old when the GameCube came out, so oh, I was like, oh, Resident Evil, <laughs> right? <laughs> I feel so old now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good choice, though, very good choice. I, I had to agree, Resident Evil 4 was, was awesome. Like the none of the Resident Evil games like ever gave me the the creeps or anything like that, but they did they did perfectly carry through atmosphere for the most part. Well, one and two, three dropped the ball in my opinion. Four revitalized the series. Five they kicked it off a cliff, and six they lit it on fire. So <laughs> they kicked it off the cliff and then shit on it and then lit it on fire. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then I, uh... I I don't know what the hell Capcom was thinking. They, well, they keep, they keep going, though. They have uh, Revelations and Revelations 2 now they're working on. It's like just Yeah, but you have to admit kind of one stop. thing. You have to admit one thing. Mm -hmm. I think they realized 5, they kind of screwed the atmosphere. Because, I mean, granted, it is it is a little unnerving when you see like 40 of the, um, I think they were called Magini, I think they were. You know, the zombie yeah. guys in, in the fifth one. It is a little unnerving when you yeah. see them running at you. But you're you're also in Africa, like the sunniest freaking place on the planet. <laughs> right. <laughs> a lot is lost when you see something really clearly, you know? It's like a sp yeah. spiders may scare the shit out of me, but if I can just barely see the spider in the corner of the room, I can just kind of see something lurking there, I'm a lot more unnerved than if I can clearly be like, fuck, I'm staying away from that corner of the room. <laughs> and that, and I just looked around my room to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. As I'm saying this, I'm kind of glancing up at my ceiling like, Jesus, I hope to God there isn't something hanging over my head. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when you wake up at night and you see something in the background and you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, mm -hmm. I have this cardboard cutout of a stormtrooper in my in my room now. <laughs> and for the first, like, week, I would wake up and be like, <laughs> And I also uh, have an inflatable T-Rex in the other corner here. And you didn't damage the while, cutout, did you? <laughs> what was that? You no, didn't no. damage the cutout, like, wake up, motherfucker, just throw something at it. No, no, no. Like, but oh, the, the stormtrooper's head is gone. The one thing... The, the, the inflatable T-Rex got me the most, though, because I would wake up in the middle of the night, and there's a poster that fell over onto the T-Rex at one point. <laughs> so I got up, and there's only, like, a glare, like, a, a little glow from my mouse because it stays lit up all night. And it was, like, I was, like, really freaked out. I had to turn on my <laughs> lights, and I had to, like, play a video game. I was like, okay, we, we are waking up for a little bit. <laughs> Taking that poster down. I I can I can totally understand that would that would definitely that was I had that I had something similar like that happen to me once when I was a kid I had when I was like fourteen fifteen I had posters all over my walls and I put a few on my ceiling just because <laughs> I had like no space left at that point right and I had one like right over me it was it was like my favorite car it was a Lamborghini right. And it fell off and landed on my face one night when I was asleep. So that was a that was a little bit of an unnerving moment. Needless to say, the poster got torn in half. And a Lamborghini still. is no longer your favorite car. Yeah, yeah well, the poster of it isn't. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, good honorable mentions, definitely. The Resident Evil series is... Despite the crap Capcom is pulling, I still love that series. Sort of. Yeah. 
the f- you have to admit the fourth one was perfect atmosphere yeah, well, well, yeah. you know the weapons the way everything worked in there it was terrific it was spooky it was scary it felt like a resident evil and then five as we just discussed was shit six even more shit they're like oh fuck we screwed up with the atmosphere let's make it dark and depressing again all right well points for going back to that but points off for turning it more into a quick time event than an actual fucking game the damn train in the in the fucking tunnels in Leo's campaign. Yep. Could not dodge that thing for the life of me. And something oh, would I always know. push that, me into that it. That thing fucking killed me like a dozen times. I, I I only ran two of the stories on the damn thing. Because the game just... It wasn't up to par. No. I'm a hardcore Resident Evil fan. I used to bust out all the games and do a run-through in October. as kind of like a homage to scary games type shit. I haven't done it since I played 6. Because it just, it, just, <laughs> it just shit on it. Yeah, and Revelations is again their attempt to try and patch things up. They they took it back a notch and like let's make it scarier again and back to the roots, but it's it's I feel like it's too late now. They just they shit on it, which is funny, because the guys that made the Evil Within were the guys that made, you know, the Resident Evil games a few years mm-hmm. back. Yeah, in fact, I'm pretty sure it was the fourth game. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was the same team that made the Evil Within that made the the fourth Resident Evil. So clearly, yeah, yeah. something has happened over there, and they're like, "We need to change out our team," and it's just gotten worse. So, all right, well, uh, honorable mention one for me. Okay, it's it's not a terribly scary game, but it does have good atmosphere, and there are a few moments in it where you do get a little bit of anxiety because you you know your back is to the wall and you know you're going to have to fight some shit. And that's the Metro series. Both Mm -hmm. of them. Metro 2033 and the sequel, Metro Last Light. They both have a few moments during the campaign where you you just feel uneasy and where you're at is just a little bit spooky so it, it does it does make my list as like an honorable mention, even though I wouldn't really put it under like a horror title. I'd put it more under like sci fi slash post apocalyptic kind of thing. Like a survival. Pretty much. Pretty much. And I mean that that actually is my favorite mode to play in the games is the survival mode. I don't like the Spartan one where it's it's more running and gunning. I, I like the one that adds an extra level of desperation because you just, the, like, ten rounds you have in your magazine might be all you have to get through this mission kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, that's my honorable mention. Josh, take us home with your final honorable. I already did both of mine. Did you? Yep. Until Dawn and Resident Evil. Oh, Until Dawn. I'm sorry, that one just keeps blinking out of my memory anymore. That's I okay. think it's because I saw the clips... From your one thing, and it's like all cuts, uh, like quick time events, and it somehow oh, just yeah. evaporated from my head as like an actual game. Yeah, if you're not a fan of quick time <laughs> events or stuff like that, I mean, just don't get it. It's not worth playing. But if you're if you're a person who likes to you know more of a story type game, then it's good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, folks, this has been the Rants Halloween special and our list of awesome Halloween time games. Thank you for listening. But before we go, we would like to ask you to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let us know what you thought. And darn it, you got to check out my buddy Josh's channel. Josh, tell them all about your channel. Oh, my channel's a magical place. (laughs) (laughs) It's a magical place filled with exploding kittens. Uh, I do uh, I, I do a lot of things on my channel. Um, I have a, my own podcast, which is called Josh Cast, uh, where I just talk, kind of like now. Um, I also have uh, gaming videos, gaming clips. Uh, I'm doing an Uncharted 2 playthrough, uh, which is actually live that I put on YouTube. Um, even though it's ended, three-second reviews are still on there. Um, I'll probably add more of those eventually. And... Um, I mean, just look out for new things. Come, I, I try to put out new stuff every week, whether it be random videos or, or YouTube haikus or gaming clips that are just kind of unedited from my PS4 uh, all the way to just live stuff that I just I find something stupid at a store and I comment about it. So, you know, give me a, give me a like if you want to. Give me a subscription. Uh, it's Charger's opinion. And, Robert, why don't you tell them all about 
the rant channel. You know, I think I will take a second just to remark that we have a few good series. We have our podcast here, The Rant, where occasionally our passion for something explodes into a, well, a rambling rant, if you will. (laughs) But don't forget to check out our other series. We have Verses, put together by our very own Josh. They are an excellent series. You should check it out. And we have our five-minute reviews as well. And let's not forget, we also do live gameplay streams, uh, definitely on Saturdays and occasionally (laughs) throughout the week if we have free time. So thanks for listening, folks. This has been The Rant.